Welcome back to the logic of IELTS. Writing task 2 has a few different prompts, and in my opinion, some of them are harder to write than others. Today, I'm going to talk in detail about one of the hardest prompts you will ever see. To save time in our video, I will not show my whole model answer. That model answer you can see on my Facebook group, Hop IELTS 9.0 Gung Tae Mai Ko. You can see the link here and we will link it in the description below. And check out our beautiful website at logicofielts.com to register for a free account and see even more content. Overall, IELTS has prompts that ask you for your opinion, prompts that want you to discuss both sides of something, and prompts that ask you for a solution to a problem. These prompts are not equally difficult. For example, I believe that writing about advantages and disadvantages is harder than writing about your opinion. Since the prompts are not equal, we cannot use the same method to handle all of them. So today, I am going to teach you about the hardest prompts in writing task 2 and a method to handle them. For a lot of students, prompts with unfamiliar topics in general are hard. If you work in tourism, for example, it might be hard for you to write about a prompt that asks about finance or economics. You can learn about any topic you want if you study English generally, but that takes time, and it does not teach you how to write. The biggest difficulty is in learning how to write according to the types of prompts you encounter. These can only be learned by applying a method that you must learn specifically prompt by prompt. In general, we have four prompt types. Agree, disagree, discussion, proposing a solution, and direct questions. Today, we are talking about the hardest prompt types, so we will only learn about prompts under the discussion type. Discussion type prompts have two forms. Let's look at them one by one. The first one should be familiar to you because it looks like this. It has long been believed that a healthy diet is based around physical exercise. However, recently others have contended that the food you eat is even more important. Discuss both sides. This prompt is clearly identified by the phrase discuss both sides. The other one looks like this. Fast food restaurants and convenience stores provide accessible food to a wide range of people. What are the advantages and disadvantages of this kind of food? You might look at these two prompts and think they are two different types of prompts. However, if you analyze these prompts logically, you can know that they follow the same structure. Both of them ask you to think about two sides of a comment. Obviously, you will write about the good and bad things of the comment, so in reality, these two prompts can be handled in the same way. However, they are handled much differently from the other prompts, like those that ask for your opinion. Let's look at that now. We will focus on the first prompt about a healthy diet that discusses both sides. For a prompt that asks your opinion, you have to give your voice. That means you have to provide what you think and support it. However, for prompts that ask for both sides or advantages and disadvantages, your voice is not important unless the prompt asks for your opinion. This prompt wants you to express your knowledge on the topic and your ability to talk about it in English. It does not require your opinion and I think that makes it much harder than the other prompts. This prompt type is difficult because it requires you to write in a different way. How can we do that? First, we have to identify the key points behind the two sides of the prompt. Let's try that with this prompt. It is asking about physical exercise versus a healthy diet. For this kind of prompt, each of our paragraphs must have two points. One point is about one side and the other point is on the other side. A lot of students make a mistake when they see a prompt asking to discuss both sides. They write one body paragraph about one side, and they write the other body paragraph about the other side, 
or for advantage disadvantage, the first paragraph is the advantage and the second paragraph is the disadvantage. This is a real problem. The prompt asks about the plural advantages and disadvantages. So if you only write one point for each, it's not enough. You will not score in task response because you have not written according to the prompt. The solution to this problem is to write each paragraph with two points, one paragraph on one side and one paragraph about the other. Using the prompt discuss both sides, I will show you how to do that. First, think about the ideas supporting the first statement that a healthy diet is based around exercise. How is this statement true? First of all, exercise helps you to maintain your health. It strengthens your cardiovascular system. That means your heart. When your heart is strong, you can do more activity and that helps to build muscle and reduce health risks. Next, we have to think about how diet supports health. The kinds of food you put in your body affect you significantly. If you eat a lot of sugar and bread, your blood glucose will be high and you might be at risk for diabetes. If you eat too much fatty meat, it could make your cholesterol too high and put you at risk of heart disease. The best kind of diet is a balanced diet because you can get nutrition from green leafy vegetables, eat some low fat meat, and have a modest amount of carbohydrates. That means things like bread and rice. With this information in mind, we can form our paragraphs for these two sides. I always write three body paragraphs for my essays. Each body paragraph will have two ideas, one about exercise and one about the food you eat. Let's think about our ideas for the first paragraph. For physical exercise, we can write about strengthening the heart with activity. For food you eat, we can write about eating healthy proteins. Our paragraphs must always be connected by a central topic. The central topic of these two ideas is cardiovascular health. Protein keeps muscles and the heart strong, and exercise builds up these muscles as well. The next paragraph is on another central theme. For this theme, I will write about the preventative measures of a healthy diet and exercise. For preventative measures in diet, reducing the amount of sugar and bread you eat will keep your blood glucose levels stable. For preventative measures and exercise, simply going for a daily walk can help burn excess calories and reduce blood glucose levels. The last paragraph is about control and maintenance. In everyday life, sometimes we're too busy to eat perfectly for every meal, and that's okay. To control our daily health, we can plan out our meals in advance. Do we have a long meeting on Friday afternoon that will crash into the meal? We can grab a simple snack from a fast food stall, no problem. But we make sure to plan the rest of the day correctly. That means lower carbs and low sugar for breakfast and dinner. What about the other side, which is exercise? What if our work is so long and tiring that we don't feel like doing exercise or walking that day? We can maintain with some simple physical actions. If we have a desk job, we can stand up and stretch every 30 minutes. Otherwise, once we get home, we can just relax and watch shows and lay in the bed. But every hour or so that we are home, we can make ourselves get up, walk around the house, and stretch. These small actions support our physical health and are easy to write about for IELTS. So this has been how the logic of IELTS handles the hardest prompts in writing task two. As always, submit your writing to me if you need further assistance. And check out our beautiful website at logicofielts.com to register for a free account and see even more content.